no many of us expect that because God is with you then he will just show up and change everything no he will administer the change through the process you are going through the change won't come like a miracle the change will be the result of a process so the point is this can you still stay with God when the process becomes tough because your guarantee for possibility is tied to your acquaintance with him whether he's still with you normally after burials like that on the burial day everybody's there and after burials the whole family will be quiet that's when the process begins to kick in when you pray and it's as if you are not hearing any feedback from god that's when god is working most powerfully process the issue we need to probe at every time is is god at work is god with me and so even in ministry we, we knew of a truth that god had called us but you see God was calling me with the message of the kingdom. And those were the days when the leading emphasis in the body of Christ was breakthrough and prosperity. It was something that was self-centered. It, it was a quest to meet our personal needs and to satisfy our longings. Meanwhile, what God was calling me to preach was what would satisfy Him. You know, that's a different level. You see, doctrine is in three phases. Doctrine can be need-based. That's the type we have in Africa. Then doctrine can be function-based, where people are taught how their role in the body of Christ in facilitating the things that, um, 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 you know, activities that are built into the body, uh, releasing and stewarding grace so that other members of the body of Christ can be blessed. In the function-based aspect of doctrine is others that are blessed. In the need-based aspect of doctrine, it is me that is blessed. But in the kingdom-based aspect of doctrine, it is God at this place so people were drunk with the first phase of doctrine because salvation is was for you salvation is man's basic need so our god also meets needs see the wine that the church had drank at that time was on the first level a need-based kind of service delivery and god was calling me to preach about the kingdom something that would satisfy the desire that was upon his heart it, it was like swimming against the tide the point is this is God with you because what he was calling me to do by analysis was impossible and meanwhile if you can if you have the ability to fulfill what God is calling you to do then you are not called so the real thing about your life is that quiet statement there for God now, so let's do a quick test, a quick test to know if God is on your side, still in your boat. Um, can you flash back to the last 10 years and look at yourself today? Is there any improvements? The things you used to pray for 10 years ago, has the prayer points changed? I, I told you that God's pattern is that He weaves you through a process that will result in you becoming. A custodian of generational blessings when I began to learn how to fast fasting was to gain mastery in fasting was the greatest challenge but it was part of the process today that is no longer a problem I desired once to be able to hear God clearly so that anytime I speak it will be the mind of God that's going forward that is no longer a problem I had to come here today to I'm trying to prophesy that's what I'm doing this guy was going into sleep as a context it doesn't seem that you will ever be remembered his brother sold him off and he was off the shelf but unfortunately he went with another thing that was not obvious God The first thing that God does when he's with you is not to give you material things. He affords you the opportunity to know him and how reliable he is. And when you take the risk of trusting him, then he shows you that he's dependable. The journey of a man in the wilderness is 
is the length of your journey in the wilderness is the time it takes for you to trust God. If it will take you 25 years to trust God, then your wilderness experience will be for 25 years. If it will take you five years to trust God, then your wilderness experience will be five years. You determine your wilderness experience. If you see the lives of the patriarchs, they trusted God. Because how do you think a man will begin to sow seed when there's no rain? And his reason for doing that absurd activity on the field and people will be mocking him was that he heard God speak. That's a man that is sold out. He has so he understands the texture of the voice of God. And if God speaks to him, he knows exactly that God has spoken to him and he is willing to ride, even if it looks like mad. Your journey in the wilderness is as long as how much time it will take you to trust God. Because of time, I need to prophesy to you. What he said to me to tell you, no, you don't need to stand up. He said, though thy beginning be small, because God is with you, thy later end shall greatly increase. The way you started, will, it will be impossible to relate the way you started with what God will begin to do with your life. The factor in this scripture is that God Oh, I, I didn't tell you, when we started ministry, some pastors came to me and said, I think I can come and start ministry in this town without informing them. As if there is a, there is a register where you need to go and put your name down. I also came. Hallelujah. Then it came to pass. What they said made me focus on God more intimately. Sometimes you need a challenge to know you don't have any other option but God. I focused on Him. The one that called me because i don't know those pastors but i know the one that called me so i stayed with him i'm on your side when i spoke to my father in the lord about the threat he said don't make noise in that city go and take deep roots so i came back and then we began to pray and to, to disciple the few people that god had given to us a thorough work it affected my health it affected my finances it affected everything about my life i knew that apart from that assignment i didn't have any other thing to do that was what God committed me to do, and I'm going to be faithful. In becoming faithful, I began to grow in my ability to teach and to the skill of bringing the counsel of God from the scriptures. I didn't need a big congregation to learn that. My commitment to the little people that God had given to me was enough platform for me to grow in the grace that God has bequeathed to me for ministry. And it came to so we were, we were without the signboard. There was, in fact, we stopped putting handbills. Yes. And we we're taking. We we're not sending out handbills. Our meetings were getting full. But those guys that came to threaten me did not know because it was not. Yeah. We were running, we run, we ran for eight years without handbills. And the whole place was full. And my friend now came and said, Why are you not sending out handbills? I said, There's no place to put the people. Let's be these ones that are here, let's labor on them. You don't understand which kind of guys. You know what? If God is with you, all the things were taught in Bible school that if you want to succeed, it's hard to do. I, I did the opposite by leading. I mean the opposite of each point. Oh, they say the way that you are going, your finances will not be in shape. What God was telling me was different from what we were taught. So I followed it. And people met us in the process and said, you are not going anywhere. You know, if you see a fetus in the womb before nine months, it looks like a tadpole. This is what happened. After 11, 12 years, we started holding city-wide events. But our number, the congregation, after they invited, is still the same number. So those guys that came to me were, obviously, they will send their spies to come with feedback. The next day, the citywide event, it grew, and the impact started becoming international. It was from then I started having invitations to preach in crusades in other nations. The breakthrough was the third year of that crusade. The third year of that crusade was what opened up the atmosphere. And as God was opening up 
the atmosphere for us. All those pastors that came to send that threat, their ministries closed down. Sass is here now with the baby. You can march to the front. We have three minutes to finish the dedication. You were there. You saw the place we have been transmitting from small place. Okay, you know the one. We were there for 14 years. I was an international preacher, but that was our base. When we go to preach in places, the whole place will shake. But that place didn't grow. Because it's God that gives. See? <laughs> and God, when I now ask God, why did it take you so much? I said it was hiding me from corruption. So some of the things you are even praying for will, will destroy your life. Let God regulate your possibilities. He said, if I became popular too quickly, I would have been part of the Yahweh Yahoo people now. God needs to keep you for some time so that your convictions can become strong before he gives you visibility. Because the arena of visibility hmm, is heavily laden with distractions, with things that can pull away your soul if you are not adequately rooted in the things of God. I was in the wilderness for a long time. Many fathers in that city came to me and said, you are good, move to Abuja. Don't end up like us. And they said that with a heart that was sincere. Let's preserve this one. But I knew that my place was not a butcher. Don't leave that place. If God is with you in that land, so in that land. And in that barren place, God will cause you to be fruitful, to reap an hundred. Don't change location. Okay? Today, almost every month during the course of this year, we have been receiving delegates from different parts of the world. Still in that, that place. The governor has been asking, who are the people building this thing? Because he drives to, back to his house and to the office on that road. He said, in fact, he almost sacked one of his commissioners because an informant lied to him that this is commissioner that he's doing so. So he almost sacked him. And when they checked him, he, he, the commissioner needed prayer. So he even needed prayer. So he left. Who are the, who are the people? Don't worry, when we are done, we we'll invite him. Say, come. I heard you been asking questions about the people. He knows that that money is not in the coffers of the state. What began to happen in the land is bigger than what the state can do. Whenever me and my wife walk into that arena, I, it's obvious we are small. But you know what? What makes the difference is just that fact. For God. Everything can go. If I have God, if I have God, I've approved it. I, I went entered London with one with one small bag, one strange trouser and one shoe like this. I just just came. Just all I went with was God. Because by the time I reached where I was going, um, the bag gave way. So another bag replaced it. Alright? That means I just came with my self. And the campaign began. The story is not for today. Can you can you build your spirit? Can you go deep in your spirit? Can you invest in your spirit? It's capacity. Can you take time? Not don't be in hurry. Don't see a Yahoo pastor and envy him. His soul has been snared. No, don't, no, 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 no. Learn how to pray. Hmm. Yes. A time will come, you will thank me for. What I said, God, he told us the truth. I've seen pastors that wasted. I've seen pastors that built ministry based on strategy and management. Based on customer care service. Customer care services. Based on colors and blendings. You will know it was a waste of time. If that's your continent. We like colors. We like 
digital convenience. And if you have the substance and you add that, whoa, you have an A. But don't confuse that with the substance. So the environment and the suffering became a blessing. It made me rocky. I'm not afraid. If I pray and I come back and I tell you we are breaking this wall, believe me, this will happen. Because I know the one that is with me. Though thy beginning be small. The Lord is in your midst. And I later end a great name. Increase. That's what the Lord has said. Thanks for watching. We believe that you've been blessed by this powerful content. Please do well to like and tell us how this video has blessed you in the comment section below. And do not forget to subscribe to this channel to stay updated for more powerful content like this. God bless you.